After the prince and the gardener had gone on the elephant, we are also obliged to tell the people what happened to those who stayed behind. The elephant has got religion. The others also believed the same at first when they heard the commander shout. They followed the elephant and left the horses behind. But that is not possible. When the elephant reached the field of death, their journey was interrupted. As usual, Vandiyadeva's horse, which went first to everyone, fell into the field and got stuck in the mud. They took it out with great difficulty, but it was found that the horse was no longer fit for the journey. Sinadipati Bhuthivikrama Kesari hit his head not knowing what to do. I have never made such a mistake in my life. Are you all just standing around? What can we do? How can we save the prince? If anyone has an idea, tell me. Said. Then all Alwarkadayan came forward and said, Sinadipati. Something seems to me, shall I tell you? He said. Are you looking for something good to say? Say it quickly. Said the commander. The elephant the prince went to didn't really like religion. What are you talking about? Who likes religion? You. No one likes religion. The prince suspected that you were delaying the journey on purpose. So he hastened to leave the elephant in such a way that he would leave us. We all know that the prince knows all the secrets of elephant taming. The commander was relieved to know that this was true. Well, so be it. But mustn't we get to the mouth of the throat river? We must find out what happens there sometime. You must go. If you can find a boat somewhere along the beach, you can board it and cross, or you can wait for Parthipendra Palavar's ship to arrive. Vaishnava. You are wicked. It seems you have said something like this to the prince. Commander. I have not spoken to the prince since this expedition left. After this they went eastward along the side of the sea. Nears may have some knowledge of the nature of the northern part of the island of Sri Lanka. The northern tip of Sri Lanka was given the name Nagadwipam that day. The area was separated from the rest of Sri Lanka by sea encroachment from both sides. The place where the sea was too narrow to go from one area to another was called the Elephant Death Sector. Sometimes there is water shortage in this sector. Then you can easily get down and pass. At other times it is not easy to overcome. It should be crossed in boats. The name Elephant Death is derived from the regular passage of herds of elephants passing through the sea at this place. It is also said that in earlier times, elephants were taken on ships at this place and sent to foreign countries. At that time all the boats along the coast of Sri Lanka mostly went to Matadam and Trikana Hill. However, thinking that there might be one or two boats somewhere that failed to escape, Senathapati and others kept looking. At last a small boat belonging to a fisherman was caught. There was only one rower in it. Knowing that the person asking was the commander of the Chola nation, he agreed. They boarded a boat and crossed the sea channel. But then how to reach the mouth of Thon Timon? Walking the wild path is not easy. It also takes a lot of time, so they decided to use the same boat and go along the lower coast to reach the confluence of the Thon Timonar. By midnight, the boatman left the boat on the seashore. After that he got tired. Telling others to help is no use. He said, we have to turn back often. There are many sharp corners and boulders. If we hit a rock, the boat will break and become a hundred. From now on, we will be able to sail the boat only at dawn. The commander etc. were also tired. So they went down to the shore and lay down in a grove. Vandiyathevan did not like this at all. He got into a fight with Alvar Kadayan. It's all because of you. He said. What can I do now? Alvar Kadian asked. You don't say anything from your heart. I have been watching from Kadampur. You say little, you keep half the news secret, do you know the purpose of the prince's ascent on the elephant? If you had told me earlier, wouldn't I have climbed on that elephant? Vito May? Go back to the old room and tell the younger brat. Vandiyathevan said. Your duty is done when you give the leaf. What more? Alwarkadian said. That's not it, 
my duty is done only after I get the prince to the younger brat. You seem to stand in the way. No, father, no. I am not standing in the way. Tomorrow I will bid farewell to the commander and go on my way. Your work is done. You make it look as if you have captured the prince and given him up. I always had a little doubt about you. Now it is certain. Thus they fell asleep after fighting for some time. They slept like well-worn beaten men. All Alwarkadayan was the first to wake up after hearing the sound of the boat breaking in the early hours of the morning. The sight before him startled him. In the sea there was a wooded area spread out with mat trees a short distance away. It was well known that it stood ready to depart. A boat was going from the shore towards that grove. There were three people in it besides the boatman. It didn't take long for Alwarkadayan to realize that the boat was the same boat that had taken them on the first evening. He quickly surmised where the tree suddenly came from. Beside where they lay the sea had sunk into the earth. The trees partially obscured the place. It was in that hut that the forest should have stopped and it should have left at dawn. Who owns that piece of wood? Where did it come from? Where to go why is the boat heading towards the ship? Who are in it? So many questions appeared and disappeared like lightning in all Workadian's mind. General! General! Get up! He shouted. Senate Hapati, Vandiyathava, and two other soldiers woke up startled. The first thing they saw was a sailing ship standing in the sea. The general said, Oh! It is a Chola ship. It may be the ship sent by the Palyavatarayas. Perhaps the prince is going in it, or what? Alas! I have fallen asleep. What a devil we have done! said. Then, where's the boat? Let's go and see if we can catch it. Said. He caught sight of the boat going by then and said, Oh! Is that the boat we came in? Who is going to board it? Hey boatman! Stop! Stop! He shouted. I don't know what fell into the ears of the boatman. He did not stop the boat. He paid up and went. Vandiyathevan came watching and listening to all this. There goes the prince on that ship. What the commander said penetrated through his ears and stuck in his mind. After that, there was no room in his mind for any other memory. Is there any doubt about what he should do? Did he need to command his feet? Not at all. In the next moment he plunged into the sea. He pushed the waves and went at high speed. Fortunately there is not much water on the coast. So he went far too soon. He also went near the boat. The depth of the water suddenly increased. A precarious situation ensued. Oh! I'm going to drown! Save me! He shouted. I heard someone laughing in the boat. Then some voices were heard talking. The boat stopped, the boatman bent down and offered his hand. Vandiyathevan got on the boat and sat down. The boat went up. Vandiyathevan examined the people in the boat. One is not from Tamil Nadu. He looked like an Arab. He looked at the other two wondering how he got here. They were covering half of their faces and wearing muntas. But it was known that they were from Tamil Nadu. Not only that, they were also seen as seen faces. Where, where did we see them, ah? Remember. Aren't these people who came back from Parthibendra Pallavas Tambala? Alvar Kadayan said that these people came to kill the prince himself? Oh! Have we even seen one of these anywhere else? Isn't he the magician Ravi Dasan? Didn't he come to see the Queen of Pallavur after screaming like an owl? Well, well they're going to get on the ship knowing the prince is on board. Aha! Uh -huh. Is this a danger on the prince's way? How good was it that we rushed to catch this boat and board it? The boat was going, it was approaching the forest. The people on the boat fell silent. Vandiyadeva could not bear the silence. He wanted to give a speech and see. Where are you going? He asked. Don't you know? We're going to the dock. Said the magician. The voice he spoke through his half-closed mouth sounded like the voice of a demon. Where is the ship going? 
Vandiyathevan asked. It should be known after the ship, said Ravidasan. Silence fell on the boat again. Outside was the sound of the ocean. Now the magician Ravidasan broke the silence. Where are you going, Dad? He asked. I am also going to the ship, said Vandiyathevan. Where will you go after the ship? That will be known only after we board the ship. Vandiyathevan read the lesson again. The boat went near the ship. A ladder descended from above. They climbed into it one by one. Vandiyadeva touched the ladder before it went up. There was some talk on the top deck of the ship. It sounded like a language he didn't understand. Vandiyathevan climbed the ladder even faster and jumped to the ship's deck. Immediately after jumping, where's the prince? He rushed and looked around. The sight he saw around him also stirred his iron heart a little. Around him stood men of the Arab country of terrible appearance. Everyone looked like a giant. Everyone was staring at him. No one answered his question. Vandiyathevan felt that we have done something big wrong. It was not a Chola ship, cannot be. The people involved are not Tamil sailors. Arab men bringing huge horses for sale. A prince on this ship is impossible. We came in a hurry and got up. How to escape? He stood at the edge of the sea and looked down. The boat was going. Boater. Stop. He shouted and jumped into the sea. Then a diamond-like hand grabbed his vocal cords from behind and pulled, a push. Vandiyathevan fell in the middle of the dock. He got mad. He jumped up and punched him in the muzzle. The six-foot-tall Arab fell, pushing the man standing behind him. A terrible growl was heard behind Vandiyathevan. He looked back in good time. Otherwise he would have been stabbed in the back. He knocked the knife away with a swift return. It fell into the ship with a dana sound, splashed away and disappeared into the sea. The next moment Vandiyathevan came and caught him from all four directions. The loved ones spoke something in an incomprehensible language. Their leader commanded in a voice of authority. Immediately they brought ropes and tied Vandiyadeva's legs and hands. They tied his hands to his body and then the four of them carried him to the lower floor. Vandiyathevan tried to free himself by kicking whenever he went. That attempt did not work. They took him to the bottom of the ship and laid him on the pile of logs. They tied it together with one of the logs and went up. The ship rocked this way and that. Vandiyadeva learned that the ship had started its journey. As the ship rocked, the logs tumbled over him. His hands were tied so that he could not remove them. Vandiyathevan thought to himself, if I can survive this time, I will not do anything in haste. I should do it after thinking deeply like a wise man. Just then, a ghostly laughter was heard nearby. Vandiyathevan turned his face with great difficulty. He saw Ravi Dasan standing there. The cloth that had been covering half of the magician's face until now was now removed. Father! I brought the tiger of the Chola clan, the tiger was not caught. But you, the fox of the monkey clan, were caught. Until then, he was lucky. He said. In the above programs, the people who were present watched only till Vandiyadevan boarded the boat. Only the boatman knows what happened in the forest. He immediately turned back and reached the shore. The general and others boarded the boat. They had come to the decision that they could no longer continue to capture that tree. So they decided to go to the confluence of the Thandamanar. Another ship might be there. There might still be a prince in it. At least get some news right? They asked the boatman. Not a single detail is known from him. He said, I was sleeping on the boat. Someone came and knocked me early in the morning. They said that they would give me a lot of money if I brought them on board. I went and said that you can come back before you wake up. I didn't know anything else. As far as he knew about the stories above, all were caddy and told the prince not to leave one. Then said, Prince. When Vandiyadeva leaped into the sea, I thought at first that I might follow him. But I am always a little hesitant about the sea, 
I do not know how to swim very well. Also, I had a little doubt about the ship that was going. It seemed impossible for them to get on it. Still, there was a doubt that the ship could be a Cholanadu ship. I also told the commander about this. We both decided to come here and see and decide. Only after seeing ourselves, our minds were at peace. He said. Aromas Hivarma listened carefully to what Alvar Kadayan said and said, but there is no peace in my mind, Thirumalai. Vandiyathevan is going on that ship. The evildoers will catch him and throw him in the underground prison. Said. Then the commander said, Prince. Why should you depend on the power of those deadly people? Just give your consent. By the next full moon, I will settle the power of the evildoers and lock them in that underground prison and do it again. Sir. Don't you ever dream that I would go so far as to go against my father's will? Said the prince. At this moment they all turned around hearing the sound of a horse galloping. The horse stopped at a short distance. Everyone was surprised to know that it was a woman who had come on that horse without a face rope or a seat to sit on.